Hey guys, it's Brian from Moto Tech. I'm gonna go over something today. I'm gonna go over the Fish Moto. Uh, we're only gonna go over one small aspect of it. We're gonna go over the installation of this, the starter gear sprag clutch assembly on the end of the crank. Uh, I've been asked about it a bunch of times by customers and then uh, because of other videos online yesterday, I got a bunch more people messaging me today with my asking my thoughts on it. Uh, so we're gonna go over it. I'm not going to do any edits or uh, retakes on this video, so it's not going to be super polished, so deal with it. Um, but we're going to go over this today. This isn't a paid for video. I'm not even a dealer for them. The only reason I happen to have this brand new one here is this is going on a shop project that will actually have some nice content on soon. Um, a lot better and more polished than this video. But I just want to go over all the aspects to do with this and why it could come loose and what you can do to make sure it stays on. 99% of people don't have issues with these. I actually have a lot of customers running these successfully that have never had any issues. People love them. Uh, it's a lot better product than uh, the other option that's out there in my opinion. And uh, one of the real big things is the amount of force that this is under. So stock, you just have the flywheel. Doesn't put much force on it unless there's a backfire. For some reason there's a bunch of reasons it could backfire but bike backfires it could put a lot of extra force on this and could shear it uh, the other real popular reason is it's just not installed right it starts to come loose and the second that there's no tension on it it will shear the key um, electric start obviously puts a lot of force on it but it can obviously handle it the fact that i have tons of customers running these on even big bore kits they don't recommend you run them with big bore kits, but that's only really because they haven't done much testing with it. If you do a high compression head on a YZ that's set up for like 110 octane on a 250 bore, that's way more force starting than if you have a low octane woods dome that's designed to give you smooth characteristics, it's actually gonna be less force on it than the real high performance 250 bore. So there's a lot of variables there and the force that can be put on it. So it really depends. Also, there's other factors like you're on a nasty hill and stabbing the starter and dumping the clutch and you can have a lot of things going on at once that could make big spikes in the force that's put on the key that could potentially shear it. But generally, most people aren't having any issues with these and it's usually user error whether installation or while you're just using the product um it's not always like just blatantly like did it wrong like not tight enough or whatever but there's some small things you can do that'll give you a better chance of success uh, one of the real big things is actually reading the instructions and it actually comes with a new flywheel key so pretty important this tells you exactly how they want you to install it. It even comes with other instructions that go more in depth. So they're not super detailed, but it definitely tells you how to put it on and you're not gonna have issues if you do this. There is some pretty harsh conditions that it could be under that you could change up how you install it, but we'll go over that. So this does say that you have to install it like how you would stock tells you what section the manual and everything you install it normal with the stock washer and nut just like you would run it on torque it down then remove the nut and the washer both of these have to be removed if you do not remove the washer the spacing will be off and the cover will actually this will actually hit on the cover and it will back out and the spacing wrong, gear engagement, all that stuff. So you definitely want to make sure they do it proper and take this washer out. So that's a real big thing. Goes over it here. Book tells you use Loctite. It gives you the torque spec, 45 foot pounds. So pretty straightforward. You can't, I'd say you can't mess it up, but you definitely can mess it up. You mess up anything if you try hard enough, but pretty straightforward. And then next thing we're going to go over is Loctite. Comes with Loctite. I'd actually 
only ever seen this brand with this kit. So I downloaded that brand's technical data sheet, which goes over dry time and all that stuff that does say in there to wait for it to dry too in the instructions. But I figured I'd go over this with you guys so you could see it, but gives cure time, how to use it, temperature range it's good for, all that stuff. I actually downloaded one of the Loctite sheets because it just has a lot more variables and stuff that you can see for yourself to really understand how much goes into this. Depending on the type of Loctite, it actually gives you the material and the cure time changes on the material. It changes on the temperature uh, and then it shows a chart for full strength and in relationship to time. And for steel, for example, on Loctite 620, this is like the heavy duty green stuff, uh, doesn't reach full cure until 24 hours. So some of the other materials you can put it on, you can see the charts a lot, a lot further over. So they have even longer cure times. If you try to start this before it's cured, then it totally defeats the purpose of the Loctite being installed in the first place and it will come loose. It's pretty simple. If you don't use a Loctite right, the Loctite doesn't work, and then you might as well have not used it in the first place. So this really goes over all of it. It's pretty straightforward. These sheets are different for every single type of Loctite. So if you aren't using what's in here, you need to look at the sheet, and the sheet will tell you what material it's good for and all that stuff in the temperature range. So if you're installing this in a freezing garage, that has an impact on dry time or if it will even dry. It's anaerobic, it only dries in the absence of air, so it won't dry until it's tightened down. Uh, so there's just a lot that goes into that. The other big thing is that Loctite expires. So a lot of people don't realize that. And I went and grabbed a bunch of random things from old toolboxes around my shop and all of this stuff has expiration dates. So you can see it stamped on the edges there. That expired in 22, this expired in 24, uh, this expired in 21, super hard to read. Some of the stuff you buy at like Walmart or AutoZone doesn't have a date on it. So that's kind of a pain, but if you can't remember the last time you bought it, then it's probably expired. So definitely something to consider with um, whether or not it might even work at all. Sometimes it's just that it works slower or not quite as well. Sometimes it won't work at all. So that's really something to consider there. The other thing you need to do is the threads and surfaces need to be clean. The taper, if it's all nasty, like this is an old dirty crank, it's got stains and stuff on it. You want to hit that with scotch bright, make sure it's all clean. You want to use acetone, alcohol, carb clean, brake clean, something. You want to clean all the surfaces off. If there's oil on it, the Loctite's not going to work. If it's had Loctite previously, every bit of Loctite needs to be removed. If there's Loctite on the threads on any of this stuff, you'll get a false torque reading and it's going to come loose. So it's pretty straightforward. If it's all built up, get a wire brush or something, clean it off, use a little heat if you have to, a little lighter or something. You just you have to get it all off or it will not be torqued properly. Pretty straightforward. It has to be clean inside the taper on the flywheel. It's just the cleaner it is, the better the Loctite's going to work. And that's where a lot of people fail. You see people just smearing it on haphazardly and over oil and stuff, and it just doesn't work. So if you're going to do it, you might as well just do it right. Spend an extra minute cleaning stuff. Make sure it's all good because that old built up Loctite and stuff will just it'll tighten against that, but not actually have all the force on the flywheel. You really, really need it to be um, proper. If you clean all this stuff and install everything right, you're gonna have your best chance of success. Not saying it's impossible for it to have an issue, but you really just need to set yourself up for the best chance of not having issues. And people can get away with doing things not quite right at their house, but I install stuff on customers' bikes, so. I have to be really thorough, and the more thorough you are, the better results you're gonna get. So, different types of Loctite, the blue, the red, the green. You can't just flat out go by the color. This comes with stuff you can use. You can obviously just use this. 
I'm the type of person, it's probably not ideal, where I just grab the normal stuff that I carry that's on the bench because I have giant bottles and I know it's good, but this stuff's pretty good. I read through all the tech data sheets on it. So you can definitely trust this stuff, but under real, real harsh, harsh conditions, pro racer, uh, somebody that's really abusing this, um, you could step up to using the green stuff like 620 or something like that, one of the retaining types, and you can put that on the taper and the key. You put that real nasty stuff, you'll still be able to remove the flywheel. Um, just going to take a little more effort. You can use a little mini hand torch to warm up the end of it when you go to remove it but it'll still come off if you put it on the taper. So for real extreme use and guys that are real hard or if you have a high compression engine, I would probably do something like that. This red would also work fine, but like I said, if it's real, real harsh, you might as well use a little bit stronger stuff. It can be kind of a pain to get it because I know they don't sell it anywhere local. I just ran out last week and I had to order it. So, um, but that's what I would use on the taper probably if it was, real real harsh but like i said the red would also be fine on the taper so you could do that if you're running a big bore high compression and uh then the other thing is too once that's installed you're installing it with the nut even though you aren't going to keep using this nut you still should have cleaned the loctite off this so it can be properly torqued you don't have loctite on the threads yet since you aren't keeping this the other thing the instructions say, which is fine, to put the Loctite on the threads. Nitpicking, I would say that you're probably a little more ideal putting the Loctite down inside here on the threads themselves. Whether it's using a Q-tip or a little screwdriver that you've put some Loctite on, or if you have a tip that can actually reach in there, I would use red on this. I wouldn't use the green on this because, like I said, the green's pretty strong easier breaking it off of a taper than you are on a thread so i would use red on this no matter what but the taper it's a toss-up you could use the red stuff or you could use the retaining type on it but the reason i say to put it down inside on the threads instead of here is actually if you look at this you can see that there's a couple lock washers inside there that have teeth on them and repeated removal and installation that loctite is actually going to build up on those washers and while it's probably fine you had the best chance of not having issues if the loctite's actually down inside on those first few threads and then when you thread it on it's going to cover all the threads so i would probably do that but like i said that's just being really picky but it's not a bad thing to be picky on because you don't want this to come loose so i you just want to be as particular as possible really clean your parts it really sets you up to have good results the last thing we'll go over torque wrench you need a torque wrench you shouldn't be working on engines without a torque wrench you can get away without torquing a lot of stuff you need a torque wrench i have a few thousand dollars worth of snap-on torque wrenches that's not feasible for most people your pittsburgh torque wrench you should throw in the trash those are junk I actually worked at a shop in an assembly area and everybody's Pittsburgh torque wrenches when we started testing torque wrenches were junk. We actually bought, uh, what's the brand? Tecton on Amazon. They're like 40 bucks a piece. I don't know what country they're made in. I assume China or Taiwan or something, but we had great results with them and they're cheap. So I'd recommend getting one of those, something like this. You're going to want the three eights. You're going to want to zero this when you're not using it. You don't want to use this as a ratchet. You don't want to use this to break stuff free. You want to treat this like a precision piece of equipment and be nice to it. So tighten your stuff down to snug with a ratchet, then start using your torque wrench. Go to your setting. You don't want to use quick jerking motions. You want to use it nice and smooth. You want to hold the center of the handle. You don't want to hold the end of it. You don't want to choke up on it. You want to hold the center of it. You're gonna do a nice smooth motion. And once it clicks, it's tight. You don't have to keep doing it. You don't have to go a tiny bit more. Once it's torqued, it's torqued and you don't have to keep going. So I think I covered everything in this quick video. So uh, a little longer than I wanted it to be, but 
kind of all the stuff had to cover. And this is literally just one small aspect of the installation, but I feel this is probably the most critical spot where you have the biggest chance of failure. So um, these are great kits. This isn't a super common problem, but it's common enough where I figured I'd just make a video. And if somebody asks me, I can just direct them to the video and I don't have to answer any questions. So uh, yeah, good luck guys and have a good night.